So, about a month ago, I rewatched Scott Pilgrim vs. the World for the first time in about 13 years. I finished it and I thought it was absolutely abysmal. Um, <laughs> not exactly. Not exactly. I enjoyed the movie, but I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. And... I don't know what it was about the movie in particular, but I could tell that there was a skeleton of something that was just so... I'm not really good with describing things, so I'm going to say very buzzwordy. The whole aesthetic... Honestly, I thought the film was very well put together. We can po possibly get into my gripes with the film a bit later, but... I knew that what I did enjoy about the film was only the skeleton of something more grandiose. And so I decided to read the Scott Pilgrim comics. Now, I've never read a comic book in my life except for the little excerpts in the newspapers. I don't know why saying that made me feel old. <laughs> I don't know why that made me feel- Growing up, I was always a manga reader, which actually messed me up a few times while I was trying to read the comic because I was reading things from right to left instead of left to right. It's going to be mirrored for you. So it, it, it was this way to this way. For, but, like, because I'm recording this on a camera, it's, like, mirrored. Be, I, yeah. I finished the comic in about three weeks or so. And usually when I finish some sort of product of this nature, I'm left feeling dread of... This is the last time, this is the first, this is the, this is the last time I will ever get to experience this for the first time. I can never experience this piece of work blindly ever again. And I'm kind of left there with a, a hole in my heart thinking to myself, what's next? But I finished the last volume of Scott Pilgrim, and I felt optimistic, happy, even, that it was over. Not because I hated it, but it was... Sp Scott Pilgrim is this odd phenomena for me when I think about it. First of all, when I went to go watch the movie, there was one thing that, and you have to remember that I don't remember anything about this film back in back in two, 2010. I don't, I don't even remember anything about it. First thing that caught me off guard was the age of the characters. Usually movies, I mean just entertainment in general, with stories of this nature, it's usually surrounding teenagers so when i went to go watch scott pilgrim I, I saw michael Sarah. i expected him to come out and be like oh i'm 15 i'm 16 i'm saying like i'm expecting him to say that but straight off the bat 23 22 or something like that the gang 24 25 26 like, i'm just all like oh these are people around my age which <laughs> threw me so off god because i was like damn it took 13 years for me to get to the age of these characters damn i'm young Kind of. I mean, I am. I am young. I'm young to the people that I care about, and I'm old to the people who need to be doing their fucking homework right now. But I was like, damn, these are, these are, these are characters my age. These are, these are some, like, 20, these are some 20-year-olds. And it legit caught me off guard. Because I was like, they don't usually ever tell stories surrounding people my age like this. And I feel like Scott Pilgrim has this sort of uniqueness to that decision in that this franchise sort of feels like a... And I don't even know what to really call it. Can you really call it a coming-of-age story if they're already... 
of age. <laughs> or this sort of what I kind of called it, adults learning how to adult. Because that's not something, that was something that I was also thinking about. That is not uh, a, 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 a theme that's usually touched upon in media. It's usually kids to teens and then all the way to, Honey, check the mail. I think the mortgage is due. It's like, sir, you're 22. What wife do you have, mate? But there isn't this, this showcasing of leaving adolescence into early adulthood. It's usually teenagers and then just fully fledged adults. They've already learned all they need to know. They already know everything about taxes, mortgage rates. And earlier today when they bent over, they dislocated their left shoulder, you, you know, at the age of 27. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it was refreshing to see this sort of, there's this sentiment that I see a lot from older people and it's that you never really feel like an adult I guess there isn't some sort of switch that goes off and is all like ha I'm mature it it feels like at least in my interpretation and I'm still rather I'm only 22 it feels like this uh, rather gaining of knowledge and in responsibility over time instead of this one sort of uh, foul swoop of getting all the knowledge at this uh, all at once and, th and what I'm about to say this is not a diss this is not an attempt to I'm not looking for people to come and 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 try and prove me wrong if this doesn't apply to you, I'm happy for you. I'm just saying this is my experience. I'm 22. And when I talk to somebody who's 18, I feel like I'm speaking with a child. We might look the same. We might look similar. But when we get to talking about real life topics or more deeper things, that's when the age starts to show through. And I realize, oh. This person is not as experienced as I am, and I don't even think I'm experienced at all. And one that is 1000% okay. I am more than sure that if I were to talk to somebody who's 25, they would listen to the way that I speak and go, Yo, <laughs> what is gang on? Somebody get this nigga a manual cause he's missed the plot, I'm like! And again, this is not a diss, that is a good thing. If anything, if there's some 25 year old or 30 year old, whatever, looking at me and thinking to my and thinking to themselves, huh, you know, me and this kid, we're in the same exact stage in life. I'm looking at you like, yo, where did you fail? So yeah, I don't feel like I'm in the same stage of life as somebody who's not even a year into adulthood. And that's a good thing. This is not a challenge to 18 year olds to be like, you need to grow up. Y'all will have y'all time in the same way I had mine. <laughs> I know this is supposed to be a Scott Pilgrim video. Holy hell, I got so off topic. But what also threw me off for a loop was that I knew the concept of Scott Pilgrim was this Ramona Flowers girl and Scott Pilgrim had to fight her uh, past boyfriends. I somehow did not realize that there was this romantic element to this story that I honestly, I was not ready for. Coming off the movie, I did not like Scott Pilgrim, the character. I also did not like the romance between, I also did not, excuse me, I didn't like the romance between him and Ramona. It felt very... It felt very, I'm very critical of romance when it comes to movies. I, I, I especially hate movies that is kind of just all like, this is the male lead, this is woman, they have to get together. I despise that and that's kind of what it felt like when I watched the movie. It, they didn't have any chemistry at all, at least not in my opinion. But that's where the comic book fleshed out their relationship so much deeper and 
even though I still felt the same way to a certain degree throughout the comic, I was all like, they don't even seem good for each other. By the end, I was just all like, I'm rooting for them. 1,000%. I, somehow I have been persuaded into liking these two together. I still hate Scott. He's still a bitch ass nigga, but like, I read those final two pan. I I read those final couple of panels, and I thought to myself, "Damn, these are just some young kids, just thrusted into life, thrusted into adulthood, trying to get things settled, not knowing who they are, where their place is in the world, and just fucking up." But they have each other, and I think it's kind of cute. Yeah. Again, I really want to reiterate how refreshing uh, or validating it was to see uh, people at the literal transitional point of adolescence to adulthood just not have their stuff together. Because I feel like as adults... Do we ever truly have our senses together? I feel as though we just kind of get used to taking on the stresses of life, slowly adding up that tolerance. Things that used to be stressful or things that we didn't always understand become clear to us. But new problems arise, new issues, new trials and tribulations start to appear. And before you know it, the things that used to keep you up at night at 20, you're now looking back at 21 thinking to yourself, damn, I was such a fool for looking at that. And I can see that happening at 25, I can see that happening at 35, at 45, at whatever. I saw this one person, I'm gonna butcher what they said. It kind of mirrors the leveling up that Scott does in each issue when he learns this new, uh, <laughs> this new ability of adulting. Like uh, Scott's just leveled up; he's just gotten a job. Or Scott's leveled up; he's learned how to love, and stuff like that. There's this person, and I'm going to butcher the quote because it's been so long since I saw it. But they said something along the lines of. Life is going to be a continual evolution of you as a person, but there's always going to be this outline of who you are that is constant. And I thought that was so poignant because I think back of myself at just a few years ago, at 18 to me now in 22, I'm just like, I'm the same, but I'm so totally different. The way Ramona had to, and Scott too, had to just disconnect from everybody and go their own way to find themselves. I did that at, I think I did that for maybe two years. I did that starting at maybe 18 or 19, and I didn't finish that until maybe a year ago. And I've just come out, I'm the same person, but I'm also so different that it's hard to put into words. Of course I'm biased, as I am the age group, but I, I do feel like that is a very untapped characterization. We need some more young adults just fucking up. <laughs> we we need we need to we need to stop just going. Uh, teenagers fuck up, and and then as soon as they get to adulthood, they have their shit together. Fuck you. That's a damn lie. <laughs> so yeah, those are just my thoughts on Scott Pilgrim. The comic book is my love for this character. Uh, I do not love this character. I actually hate this motherfucker. But is my love for the overall story. <laughs> And the character surrounding it going to make me break my almost 10 year streak of not watching television and make me watch the Scott Pilgrim TV show? That's a great question, human. And the answer to that is...